So my apologies, I ran out of space in my uh, recording utility, so I had to um, start a second video. So again, I just saved user1.ldiff, uh, continuing from the previous video. So we saved user1.ldiff, and now that that's saved, I should be able to run that exact same command to import that. Um, so let me just go over here and hit the up arrow, and we're going to import user1. When I say import, really, we're just running those commands, right? So we're just, this command is basically saying, go out and get that file and run the commands in that file. Theoretically, uh, there is an interactive terminal you could use to just type those commands in manually one after the other, but I find it's better to use a file. You're less likely to mess up. So I have to log in. All right, the entry has been added. So now we have Eve in our little LDAP database. So let me go back and I am going to save this as user2. And the only thing different for user2 is uh, user2, well actually is a lot different. So I'm going to copy and paste the same thing. Ah, I copied and pasted a little bit too much. Give me one second. Now. Okay, so I copy and pasted this. You'll notice that there's there's one little problem here. So my UID is Adam. We should probably set the CN to Adam as well and the UID to Adam as well. A little typo there. Um, this part is correct, though. We have Adam here. Um, again, we have to change the password hash. So I'm going to go back to password hash and copy and paste the one that I got from before. There we go, now we have the right password. So once again, I'm gonna save. So now user two LDIF. So this should import Adam. So we already have Eve, who's the manager. Now we're gonna have Adam, who is our regular user. All right, it looks like Adam has been added. So now we have both Adam and Eve as users. Now up until this point, we really haven't done a lot with um, other than using the command line. So I want to demonstrate being able to look at uh, LDAP using the uh, using a user interface like we might be used to with Windows, for example. So let's let's take a look at that. So in my directions, I, I have a link for you to go and download a tool called LDAP Admin. And I'm going to go ahead and download that now. And I will run that admin and we'll, uh, we'll try to see if we can use anonymous mode to um, to uh, to down or to uh, to check our user accounts that we just created, so here we go. There's LDAP admin. So LDAP admin 1.8 should be just fine. So I'm going to click to download that. So I've downloaded LDAP admin on my computer, which is my. Uh, my Windows PC. I'm going to double click on it. Alright, so here is LDAP uh, admin. So I should be able to um, to click the little button. So we're going to browse with anonymous mode. So I'm going to click on this little button to add a new server. So we're going to do a new connection. I'm going to call it ITAX5209. My host is going to be 192.168.1.10. And you'll, of course, use your own host name. All right, so the base is going to be DC equals localhost, comma, DC equals local domain. That looks backwards to me, but let's see if it works. So we're going to use an anonymous connection. And, oh, that worked actually. All right, um, so let's test the connection. Connection successful, excellent. So now if I double click on that, here we go. So if I open up uh, CN Manager, that looks like it's recursive. <laughs> it's opening over and over again. Let's open up, there we go. So under people, I have Adam and Eve, right? So there's my two user accounts. If I wanted to, I could probably add additional user accounts, you know, so I could copy these, right? I could copy it and create a new one and create additional users. So then for those of you that work with um, Active Directory in the Microsoft ecosystem, 
Um, this may look, oh, my system locked up. Hold on. Let me log this back in just to make sure we have access to that. So um, this will look very familiar to you if you use Active Directory. This is, uh, it's not as low level, right? So they, they have these forms more or less that you can use to edit user accounts. And here we just see the raw data. But the, uh, and of course, if I hit edit entry, I could go in here sort of like a form and edit this if I wanted to. Um, so that's basically how this works, right? So we're, we're looking at, uh, um, we're looking at LDAP. We're, we're querying LDAP with a user interface. This obviously is much more user friendly than the command line. But once we get through the work of actually setting up LDAP, from here it's pretty straightforward. But one of the things I wanted to talk about was uh, what I'm demonstrating here is that we're going to make a simple web application that uses LDAP. I could just as easily have this sample web application that we're going to create. I could just as easily have that use um, uh, Windows for authentication using LDAP as opposed to our own little LDAP server. It would work the same way for both because I use the same schema here. It should be very similar. All right, so let's move on to that step. So I, I wanted to use uh, PHP just because it's an easy language to work with uh, for web development. But we have to install PHP in order for that to work. So I'm going to do install uh, PHP. And we're also going to install the PHP library for LDAP because we can't do anything with, uh, you know, there's a library that we're going to have to call from PHP. Uh, so we'll have to make sure that's installed. So let's see if that installs for us. So it found the packages. I'm going to go ahead and install those. It's going to download, which again might take some time because my computer is a little bit slow on the uh, the internet. Okay, PHP install is done. Uh, once you install PHP, you do have to restart um, uh, Apache or HTTP. So let me do that. So systemctl restart httpd dot service. I forgot the dot service in my instructions, but I think it would actually still work. Um, so because PHP is used by Apache, Apache doesn't know that it has the ability to use PHP until you do a restart. Um, so you do have to make sure you do that restart. All right. So to verify the PHP is working, we're just going to create a really simple PHP test. Now, Fortunately, because we're using um, um, because we are using the uh, directory mode, I can just go right into public HTML, and all of the files that I want to create for my little test, I can just do right in here. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it uh, PHP test .php. and just to test PHP. PHP has a little function you can call. That just uh, runs a little test and shows you uh, what version it's running and so forth. So you just do PHP info. Um, the way PHP works is everything you see inside these red tags is uh, PHP code. So this is a PHP function. Um, but don't forget to put the semicolon at the end of PHP info. If you forget the semicolon, it will not work. Um, so don't forget to do that. My instructions, I believe, do not have a semicolon. All right, so now that we've done that, we should be able to open up our web browser. So let me go to my web browser and do PHP test dot PHP. And there it is. So it's telling me we're running for PHP version 5.6.29. And uh, here's all the stuff that it has installed. And let me scroll up a little bit so you can see it actually did install the LDAP support. So that's all installed, which is great because we're going to need LDAP. So our next step is to create our little application, uh, which is going to be uh, a file called LDAP. Um, and I think, yeah, so I have uh, basically just two files. So let me create those files. So, that, so the file is going to be called LDAP.php. And let me copy and paste the uh, file. All right, so here it is. You really don't have to change anything in here. It's going to work. By default, I created the code for you. Um, if you're curious, you can probably go through here and figure out how it works. Um, so you can see how I, you know, here we're 
logging in as student with the password of student. Of course, if you changed your uh, password to something else, then uh, then my code's not going to work. So you have to make sure that that's uh, that that's configured. Okay. So, but other than that, there shouldn't be anything else that you need to modify in here, um, unless you uh, are not using, uh, you know, you can't use local host or something like that. But it should work, you know, with local host. Uh, but if not, you could have always try changing the uh, the connection. This is basically where it's going to connect to the LDAP server. So this is which LDAP server to connect to. And then further down here, the binding is where it actually connects to the, uh, you know, it actually starts using LDIF to interfa interface with the LDAP server. So that's the first file. Then the second file that we're going to need um, is going to be LDAP app.php. But let's make sure this one works first. So all this does, LDAP.php, this is just going to test to make sure it can log in and access LDAP. So it's just going to make sure that, that, that it's actually working. So let's do ldap.php and see what comes up. All right, so here we go. So it says connecting. Result is resource ID number two. So that means it connected. Uh, it found three entries. And you can see here it's just outputting the entry. So it's outputting Eve's information and Adam's information. And that's it. So it worked. So it's able to find all of our user accounts. Um, now notice it does output the password, but it's the uh, hash. So we're only seeing the hash here. Of course, we probably wouldn't want to expose this to the web, um, that hash. So I wouldn't want to, you know, on a real server, I would never write something like this that would output that. But for testing purposes, we can see that it works. We're just outputting all of the contents from, uh, um, from our LDAP server and seeing that. So our next step is to create our little application. So I'm going to go in here and create our LDAP app. So this is going to be called LDAP underscore app.php. This is just our little sample application. Um, and you'll see how the authentication works. So the code, again, all the code is going to be in the, uh, um, in the instructions. So you don't have to write any code. You just have to copy and paste what I wrote for you. All right, so this is basically going to give us a little form where our user is going to try to log in with their user ID and password. Um, so we should be able to log in as Adam and Eve and see if uh, see if it recognizes Adam and Eve. So I'm going to do a couple different tests here. So let me save this. So let's bring back up our web page. And this time we'll do LDAP underscore app. Okay, so let me try logging in as Eve, who is the manager, and her password is student. All right, here we go. It logged in. It says, you are an admin. You are special. So it recognized that Eve is a manager. Um, so it not only logged in, but it was able to uh, recognize Eve's status. Now, let's see what happens if I try to log in as Adam. And again, Adam's password is also student. And it says, you are nobody. You are not special. So Adam is just a normal person. He's not a manager. So he's just a regular user. Now, I should also be able to try a different account, like test. Now, notice what happens here when I try to log in as test. It's not able to log in to LDAP. So typically, the way we write applications with, um, with LDAP, and even with Active Directory authentication, you simply try to capture the username and password they're trying to use to access the application. And you don't log in to LDAP and then try to check to see if their account exists. Instead, you take their credentials and you try to log in to LDAP with their credentials and, and, and then query for their user's information. So basically what you're saying to LDAP is, I'm trying to log in as Eve. Now show me everything about myself. And to the application, what we're doing is we're capturing all that information about Eve so that we know what Eve is allowed to do in our system. Um, and if, if Eve can't log in, to, uh, you know, log in to access LDAP, then that means Eve is not, you know, authorized to, to log in. So we just don't let her log in and, uh, you know, we fail at that point. So I'm sure some of you have a little bit of experience with, with user authentication in other applications. Um, so this is a little bit different, but this is, this is kind of the pattern that, that most people use. Now, if we were using something like SAML or open authorization 2.0, it would work very similar. We would just, instead of calling LDAP to do the authentication in the PHP code, we would be calling SAML or 
open authorization. Um, I could add a lab to do that, but I thought this was enough <laughs> for us to get a feel for how this works without having to go, go overboard with all these uh, additional labs. So that's it. So we did the complete lab, and at the end of the lab, we were able to see that everything works. So I'll come back in here and log in as Eve again, and there we go. So Eve is able to log in still. That's it. That's the entire lab.